Scarlet goes deep undercover to infiltrate the Arashikage clan to save Jinx and to steal a special weapon. But is the prize worth the blood she's going to spill? Let's find out in our review of Scarlet number two from Image Comics and Skybound. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Scarlet number two from Image Comics and Skybound. Let's recap briefly what happened in issue number one. Scarlet was sent undercover to infiltrate and expose a human trafficking ring that led to an unexpected discovery. Jinx, Scarlet's longtime friend and missing agent, is deep undercover with the Rashikage clan who crashed the auction selling off girls to the highest bidder. When Scarlet receives a mission to infiltrate the, the Arashikage clan to steal a secret weapon, her mission now becomes personal when she learns that Jinx may be in over her head. In Scarlet number two, we catch up with Scarlet and she's tied to a chair in a glass cage and relieved of all of her gadgets except for one. She extracts a razor blade embedded in her right side. She then uses the blade to cut her bonds and prepares to fight her way through the oncoming guards. It's a quick scene, but it's an important scene because Kelly Thompson uses this opportunity to elevate Scarlett's character by showing how she can get out of seemingly impossible situations using a combination of sacrificial grit and elite fighting skills. Longtime Joe fans may not be used to seeing this side of Scarlett, but it works to reinforce Scarlett's reputation as one of its top members with good reason. Well, it goes on the offensive when ninja guards start to swarm in to try and subdue her. She kills several of them in the process. When it becomes clear the typical Arashikage guards are no match for Scarlet, Storm Shadow calls a halt to the fight. The escape and fight were both a test that Scarlet passed with flying colors, but Storm Shadow isn't convinced of her commitment to the clan. Although, of course, Scarlet is the focus of the fight, the sequence really informs the reader about the ruthless criteria used to become a member of the Arashikage's clan of ninja warriors and fighters, etc. Unfortunately, what should be a rousing battle sequence is marred by some really strange, almost incomprehensible fight choreography by artist Marco Ferrari. There are several moves with momentum, direction, action lines, all of it, and the characters in motion don't make any visual sense. It just looks like things are moving in random directions and in all kinds of odd angles. It really throws you off because the fight just seems like random chaos. Storm Shadow escorts Scarlet through the clan's training facility, and she sees Jinx from a distance. But the two know enough not to make eye contact with each other because they know that even the smallest glance could alert the clan to their knowledge of each other. They don't want them making any connections whatsoever. The tour ends in a small room where Scarlet and Storm Shadow meet the Hard Master for tea. There, the Hard Master says, you know, I'm very much impressed with your abilities and your skills, but I don't believe you are committed to the clan. So therefore, we're going to have a final test, and Scarlet already knows that whatever it is, it's a suicide mission. Kelly Thompson uses the tour to set the stage for what's to come by establishing stakes if Scarlet fails. The Hard Master knows that he's going to send her on a mission that she'll either succeed, which means he'll be impressed and probably gain interest to the Arashikage's clan. And if she fails, she dies. And if she dies, then no harm, no foul on the Arashikage clan. So it's very much a hard line for entrance into the clan, which elevates Scarlet's challenge that's before her. The issue ends with Scarlet parachuting onto the roof of a high-class business skyscraper controlled by a rival clan. What's her mission? She's supposed to steal an ancient weapon that originally belonged to the Arashikage. We don't know what the weapon is, we don't know what it's for or what it looks like, but that's the mission before her. Now, that makes the story a little bit more confusing because the whole point of this mission for Scarlet was to infiltrate the Arashikage clan to steal a weapon from them. So it doesn't really seem to make sense that she's being sent into a clan to steal a weapon that the clan doesn't actually have. So that sort of creates some confusion with the plot. Is it a different weapon or the same weapon? We don't know. Also, the same key criticism that we made in the first issue still applies here. There is almost nothing here that makes it look, feel, or read like this is a G.I. Joe story. It is very generic spy stuff. You could swap out Scarlet for any spy here to make them look amazing and do great stuff and really kind of go deep into their commitment to the mission but at the same time if you're looking for something that says is this a gi joe comic if you remove the names you absolutely would not know this is a gi joe comic let's switch gears and talk about the art from marco ferrari it is to be generous serviceable it's just not great art uh, the figure work is decent enough but the fight choreography is chaotic mess and ferrari's integration of characters into the surroundings is also non-existent 
So, for example, if you look at several of the panels here where a character is standing in a room or moving down a hallway, you can clearly see that the background is some sort of 3D artifact that's been reshaped to fit within the art style of the comic, but there are no shadows. It doesn't look like the character is part of the background. There's almost no integration at all. Unfortunately, that seems to be the big uh, criticism for the majority of the Skybound titles relating to the Energon universe. Stories are good, maybe even better than good, but they went a little cheap on the art, except for the main Transformers title. And that's kind of a downer. Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Where does this miniseries fit in with the interconnected Energon universe from Skybound? The answer is, so far, we don't know. There is nothing here to indicate there's a connection between this series and what's going on with the main G.I. Joe stories. And there's nothing here to indicate that there's any connection to Transformers in any way. Now, it's possible, or likely I would say, that the ancient weapon that Scarlet has been sent in to steal has some sort of Transformers connection. Maybe it's an Energon cube. Who knows? Don't know at all. But so far, we're at least halfway through this miniseries, and there's no connection to the G.I. Joe titles that it seems familiar in any way it's very generic spycraft and there's absolutely so far anyway no connection to anything that is remotely related to the transformers so even though it's part of the interconnected universe it's pretty much standalone as it is right now the final thoughts what do we think about scarlet number two the hero goes deep undercover when she's tested beyond her limits to be accepted by the Hiroshikage clan so that part is great kelly thompson does a fine job elevating scarlet's competence and capabilities to make her look awesome and the clan goes through uh, some elevation as well by showing all the different things you have to you have to go through and survive to become a member which is all good on the downside the art is very subpar the lack of gi joe hallmarks keep the story from progressing beyond generic spy fodder i mean you really you could switch scarlet out for any any particular character and you wouldn't know this was a G.I. Joe comic. Interconnecting this with the Energon universe is just nowhere to be found. Overall, I would say this miniseries is turning out to be a disappointment. Therefore, we're going to give Scarlet number 2 from Image Comics and Skybound a 5.8 out of 10. It's, it's a mix of both. It's mediocre writing and subpar art. When you put that together, you just can't get a high score out of that. But let us know what you think. Do you feel differently? Do you think this is a banger of a G.I. Joe miniseries? Or do you agree with us that it just is lacking all the things that you would want out of uh, something related to G.I. Joe or the Energon universe? If you like G.I. Joe, give us a thumbs up. If you feel differently or you have alternate opinions, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining. And please stay tuned for the outro for the next review.